Vin, over there. Vin, go ahead. Yes. Um, thank you for the presentation. Could you share with us what kind of wearable devices you're interested in? It's hard to, um, it's not your fault, but it's, it's a little muffled, so if you speak loudly and clearly, so we can hear Yes. Could you share with us what kind of wearable devices you're interested in? Wearable devices. What yeah. kind of wearable devices? Oh, okay, I see. So, at this moment, so we have not uh, specified the target of the wearable device, but uh, we consider that the wearable device must be uh, a part of the M2L uh, model. So, I think the smartphone may be a core kind of device to exchange information with the wearable device, but that the original source of the traffic must be the wearable device. It's not the telephone, but it's a kind of a machine. So, uh, at this moment, so we have not to decide the target of the wearable device, but, so, I think that the uh, major, uh, I think that the emerging uh, many kinds of the devices are very attractive for the new business. But uh, we are focusing on the market of the consumers finally. So it is important to the number of devices to be widespread in the commercial market. So we are, uh, expect a uh, very common uh, wearable device is uh, very uh, helpful for the new business. Do you see wearable devices in Japan as something the consumer will buy uh, from a retailer directly or something the consumer will buy from the carrier? Yes, at this moment, so, uh, Detail directly, no, but uh, ah, yeah, sorry, retail directly means that uh, well, pay by the carriers. No, I, I, the choice would be as a consumer: do I buy uh, my watch directly from uh, Sony or do I go to KDDI? Right. Uh, it's a Sony, right. okay. and then it just adds value to KDDI. Yes, but do we try we try to develop some new uh, business styles. Yeah, yes, to provide uh, some detail shots of okay. KDDI. Well, um, you mentioned that uh, you were the only carrier to also have cable TV. Mm -hmm. How popular is cable TV in Japan versus broadcast or IPTV? Uh, okay. So, uh, IPTV is of course very common in the, but especially in the uh, urban areas. So, that the rural area is the country is the cable TV is very common. I believe we have a question over here from Rob. Mr. Nakamura, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, in Japan has been on the kind of the cutting edge of so many different mobile services and Rob brands. I, I, so I apologize again. It's, it's hard for us to hear just because the speaker's being the other way. So you got, have to slow it down. Sorry. So it, I was saying that Japan has been a leader in a lot of so services on the mobile side, uh, including you had an investment in Greek on the mobile social gaming. Uh, and also, a lot of us here aren't familiar with LINE, uh, mobile social networking. They grew to a billion users, uh, I'm sorry, 100 million users twice as fast as Facebook. Can you talk to us about what's happened with mobile social gaming, mobile social networks? From your standpoint, your, your viewpoint in Japan, what, what's happening with those areas and, and what's your forecast? Uh, yes, very interesting question. So, I'm so interested in uh, answer of your questions. Uh, yes, we have to resolve that uh, uh, current status of KDDI and not only KDDI, so Japanese carriers. So, we need to consider the behavior of the OTT players. And uh, so, as you said, that uh, new social network games and social network applications are emerging very rapidly and the consumers move from the conventional one to the 
renewables. So I think that, uh, uh, yeah, frankly speaking, I don't have a specific, specific so, uh, answer to your question, but we, I can see in my private, in my understanding, so that the current status of the Japanese users of the SMS is uh, uh, very sensitive to the uh, trend of applications moving. So, and, uh, yeah. You know, I, I saw a data showing that uh, there's a question, and it might have been even from Flurry or Iran, but sorry, not Flurry, from our friend from Quixi, I think it was Flurry data they were showing. Yeah. Flurry was showing where do people pay for applications in the world. And the number one uh, region where people are willing to pay for the applications down in Japan, the U.S. follows a little bit later, and then Europe, and then it gets, frankly, it gets pretty sparse. Other parts of the world, people are just trained not to pay. In Japan, Japan, your users are trained to pay. Now, mobile games are popular everywhere. So you have a nice cross-section of mobile social gaming and a willingness to pay, it seems, that uh, creates an economic opportunity. So, yes, I see. Uh, yes, as you say, that very closely in the Japan market. So I think that the new uh, provider is so attractive uh, so in the market. But uh, I think that uh, I'm not sure the answer to the original questions, but uh, I think that uh, uh, such market issues in the SMS and the gaming yep. market, Japanese market. So it is a very uh, so original and sometimes advanced. Yes. Yes. So and the users are so sensitive to the trend of the market and the new technologies, eager users, eager adopters of technologies. That's right. All right, well, thank you very much for your presentation and speaking with us today, and uh, hopefully you can make some good connections. But you know, one last thing I should ask, I know you have some other KDDI staff here. Yeah. Uh, would you introduce uh, this so people know? Oh, yes. Uh, okay, yeah. well, there, yes. Brian, KDDI staff, and yourself. Thanks a lot for joining us, and uh, hopefully you have some good connections. Thank you. Thank you.